Uh, so, still shaking. Uh, this is something that I've been sort of tracking back home in Norway and Europe for the past couple of years. I've done talks about this in, in several uh, conferences and uh, arenas in, in Norway and other countries as well in Europe. And I had absolutely no plans on doing this talk here in the US because I just made the assumption that since the US and Canada have stir shaking in place, there would be other people perhaps that would be talking about it, not me. I um, just have the theory uh, on, on this stuff. And the um, simple thing is, give me a call on this number if you, uh, if you can, if you have a US or Canada uh, number. Uh, eventually I will call you back. Just give it a ring and hug up. I'm not going to uh, respond. And when I call you, you there's no need to answer uh, as well. But this is just for a little bit of crowdsourcing from me. If you can, in addition, also um, text me or uh, put a message on Twitter, DM or anything like that with uh, the you know three or four last digits of your number. Um, I would really like to know which carrier you are using. And when I call you back, you're going to look for a small check mark in your call history um, and tell me whether you can see that check mark or not. So I've spent like for, I don't know, uh, eight, nine years now looking a lot into mobile hijacking, as I call it. Um, I do differentiate between port out and SIM swap attacks. SIM swap to me is messing with your current subscription with your current cell carrier, like getting a new SIM card or getting an extra SIM card. So if I get a SIM card in your name, I will be able to get your phone calls and your text messages as an example. A port out attack to me is calling your provider uh, and calling a new provider and say to the new provider that, hey, I am you and I want to move your current subscription over to the uh, new uh, carrier and get a SIM card from them. So it's a little bit of a difference, but in any case, uh, social engineering attack. Um, and I started talking about this back in 2019 after doing uh, quite a few uh, years of research. At one point, I took out, uh, um, I put out a tweet saying, uh, hey, I'm trying to learn more about uh, phone spoofing. Can somebody give me a, a call or a spoof call uh, so I can understand a little bit more how it works? And less than 30 minutes later, uh, my phone was calling and the number was plus zero, 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 lots of zeros. And obviously, it's a spoof phone call. I pick up the phone and I say, hello, this is Per. Hello, this is Vladimir calling from uh, Moscow, Russia. <laughs> and it was actually Vladimir calling from Moscow, Russia, because he's a friend of mine, and we're not talking about Putin, but another Vladimir in Moscow. And he laughed and said, ah, this was really fun. And it took me like 10, 15 minutes to find a spoofing service that would allow me to call you using pretty much any number in the world. And that's what you will see uh, on your display. So I already explained the port out attack. Uh, SIM swap is, well, I can get a new SIM for your current subscription. I can get the twin SIM card. You know, some providers do have that. I can also just get a data SIM card. That doesn't make that much sense, but it, it can be done. Some of the things that I've done back home in Norway is back in 2019, I led, made a lot of fuss in Norwegian media about how easy it was to hijack somebody's uh, phone number uh, using simple social engineering and get a SIM card in their name, as an example, or moving the sub desk subscription to a new carrier. So based on that, uh, the Norwegian government came out with a new uh, resolution, which is still not part of Norwegian law. But basically they say, uh, this is a hearing from the Norwegian government on September 3rd, 2019, actions to prevent mobile hijacking. And I'm still waiting for this to pass. It basically says that before you allow to get a new subscription or change your subscription with your current carrier or move it to another carrier, you have to provide proper ID. You can't get a, an anonymous SIM card in Norway, as an example, not possible. You have to provide ID. We, we, we want to know who you are before you get a, a phone number. I've also done a little bit on voicemail hijacking, which is something very completely different, but if you're able to spoof a phone call, uh, you can get access to people's voicemail. All the way back in August 2006, Norwegian press wrote about Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan, uh, where the Uber hacker 
Paris Hilton was actually using a car that is, I think it's either US or Canada, called Spoof Card. They still exist today. And they will allow you, spoofcard.com, so there you go, have fun. Uh, and they allow you to make spoof phone calls in the US and Canada. Because of my work, spoof cards stopped working in the majority of Europe. You could no longer make spoof phone calls to Europe. So that was me. Sorry, guys. Um, and what she did back then in 2006, she used a uh, spoof card to call into Lindsay Lohan's voicemail because she was spoofing her phone number. And doing that, she was able to listen to all voicemail messages that were left for Lindsay Lohan. And she was also able to change the welcome message as an example. I did the same thing in Norway, in Sweden and Denmark. I proved that by spoofing phone numbers, I could get access to almost 7 million voicemail boxes with three different carriers in Norway, Sweden and Denmark back in 2019. Now, most people over there don't use voicemail, but matter of fact, if you get a phone subscription in Norway, Sweden and Denmark, you always get voicemail as an included service. In fact, you can't even tell a carrier, I don't want voicemail, but you can turn it off. But of course, default, it's turned on, which is crazy. Now, back to stir shaking again. What is stir shaking? Well, you may know it in a way as caller ID in the US. Um, and it's PKI, public key uh, infrastructure for uh, phone calls. This is you. You have Verizon as your operator. You make a phone call to me. I'm using AT&T. Uh, your carrier, which supports stir shaking, will you have an authentication service. They will add a digital signature to your phone call going to me. My provider also has a verification service. They will check a certificate repository. And basically, my phone running iOS or Android in at least some of the newer versions have integrated support for verifying the incoming call and the added digital signature that to that uh, phone call. So it's PKI for phone calls. This is pretty cool. Stir shaking provides three levels of, of attestation of calls. You have the full attestation. The service provider has authenticated the calling party and they are authorized to use the calling number. An example of this case is a subscriber register with the originating telephone service provider soft switch. You have second highest level partial attestation. The service provider has authenticated call origination, but cannot verify the call source is authorized to use the calling number. An example of this use case is a telephone number behind an enterprise PBX. And the lowest level is gateway attestation. The service provider has authenticated from where it received the call, but cannot authenticate the call source. An example of this case would be a call received from an international gateway. Now let's go over to the marketing stuff, because again, we don't have this in Norway, we don't have this in Europe yet. I've been advocating for years that we should do as you do in the US and Canada. i get back to the timeline here a little bit later. But this is the marketing stuff that I have found from websites from uh, T-Mobile, Verizon, uh, the US FCC as an example. And they say that this is uh, sort of like an iPhone display and somebody is calling you. Uh, you see the number and it says uh, it's coming from Atlanta. But this could be spoofed. Now, adding stir shaken you would be able to see a verified symbol. So that is your phone authenticating, verifying the, uh, um, the, uh, um, the uh, digital key that's been added to the phone call, uh, the signature, and you will see that, yep, the verified symbol means this is actually the number calling you. It's not a spoofed phone call. Of course, it could be a scammer or a telemarketing company, but that is the number being used. And this, implementing this, is a cost to any carrier. I have no idea how much it costs to deploy this, but it's a PKI, infra a PKI infrastructure that will add digital signatures to every single phone call. So yeah, it's going to be more than $100 for sure. No. Who's paying for this? Well, in the end, it's going to be you and me, right? That's how it is. 
But more interesting is that they also say, and this is from the marketing stuff, so I cannot guarantee this is actually how it works, but they also say in the marketing materials that once you have stir, stir shaken in place, you can also add what's called rich call data. So you can actually integrate because phone calls today are mostly voice over IP. It's internet traffic, IP packets. So you can actually add text and a graphical logo and even a small text that you should be able to see on the call screen. So if it's your bank calling, it can say, you know, you could sh show the, the uh, logo of your bank and say customer service is calling or it's a hospital or a doctor or whatever else. And this is the point where I've been telling people in Europe that, well, uh, and for the telecom companies for sure, that, hey, give me this and you can add this and you can charge money for businesses and government organizations saying that if you want to add the additional level of trust to put in your logo and a text displaying why are you calling your customers, you can do that. And marketing material sets, says you need to have stir shaking in place before you are sort of allowed to add this stuff as well. So if you go into your call history on your Android or iPhone, we are basically looking for a very small check mark. Now, I was surprised because I have an iPhone 15 Pro. I, it's completely updated. Uh, I now have the uh, US number, which people keep calling me all the, uh, all the time I see on my display. And I don't see the check mark from anyone calling me, be it using Google, Ryzen, ATT, and so on. I've been calling people back, and some people have responded to me, yes, I see that from your number, I see a small check mark in the call history. But on the call screen, it doesn't show anything that could assist you in making a better informed choice if this is a spoof phone call or not. In January 2018, Canada said that they expected the implementation of stir shaking by March 31st, 2019. Got delayed a little bit. Uh, and post-deploy report by May uh, 31, uh, 2022. And in uh, December 2019, you had the TRACED Act here in the US. Uh, the FCC said uh, that this was approved by uh, March in 2020. Big providers in, in the US needed to have this implemented by June 30, 2021. And small providers in the US needed to have this implemented by June 30, 2022. And on June 30, 2021, T-Mobile USA announced that they were 100% compliant with this, their stir shaken implementation. And during all these years, you know, from 2018 to 2021, 2022, I did see Norwegian telecom providers and Norwegian government talk about this from time to time, but they never did anything. They didn't even contact anyone in the US to ask, What's the cost? What's the time frame to implement this? It was just like, yeah, that's a US thing. They have problems. We don't, so we don't care. But I found, as an example in Europe, uh, a nice little EU report, uh, several hundred pages on page 34, it says, it is unlikely that all operators in Europe will introduce systems to counteract CLI spoofing. Uh, so that's, you know, call spoofing on their own initiative without regulatory intervention. In that sense, the situation is similar to that in the USA, where operators only introduce stir shaking on a large scale after implementation of corresponding legislation. It is likely that all European operators wishing to terminate calls where both the call party number and the calling party number are US numbers will in due course have to implement stir shaking. Clearly, this technology has the first mover advantage. So again, I keep telling people, telecom providers in Norway and in Europe, you should do this. There are problems with spam calls, proof calls in the US. It's a very small problem in, in Norway, but the problem is going to come to Norway as well if we don't do anything. And the answer I'm getting is, yeah, we'll deal with that when it comes. And I'm like, okay, I'm not giving up. And funny enough, we also have a law for teleco, uh, teleco providers in Norway, and they have this excellent sentence in Norwegian, uh, translated into English saying, Service providers' telecommunications must, as far as technically possible and financially reasonable, 
block phone calls for, for anyone trying to use an A number which they do not have the right to use. We have three telecom providers in Norway with fiscal infrastructure. I've talked to all three and they say, this is a bloody difficult market to operate in. We don't make any money from providing cell coverage in Norway. So you want to still shake in? No, we're not even going to look into the price of it because we are not all, you know, at this moment, we don't make any money at all, more or less, selling uh, mobile phone subscriptions in Norway. So, you know, go away. And I'm like, yeah, let's see about that. Still working on it. So to summarize a little bit on this, what can you do? Well, tell people, because I don't know how the situation is in the US or in Canada, but in, in the rest of the world, at least my experience, people don't know that the number they see on the screen when somebody is calling them can be spoofed, which is a little bit crazy to me. Uh, I do recommend people to enroll for free in the Google Protection uh, Advanced Protection Program. Um, you can enable the lockdown mode on your iPhone. And of course, the very simple trick of if somebody is calling you asking you for your credit card details or social security number, or whatever it is, and you think it might be a spoof call, just make the very simple question, can I call you back on which number? Because if somebody is using a spoof phone call, it will be difficult or impossible to sort of call them back on the same number. And also, if you know anything about GSM networks and stuff, there are options on Android, on some Android phones, to disable 2G support. Um, it's a setting available Android uh, 13 and 14 as a minimum. And when you turn on lockdown mode on iPhone, you can also disable 2G. Because 2G, being very old, doesn't have mutual authentication. So setting up a fake base station and making your phone connect to my base station and then I can eavesdrop on you and I can send you text messages as many as I want for free is, you know, I'm gonna say incredibly easy, but it's easy enough for most people to figure out if you just study a couple of YouTube videos, more or less. And going back to what can you, your business, your organization do uh, about this? Well. I would really recommend you to tell your customers uh, about you know, your official channels. If people suspect any kind of spam, fraud, or something being done towards them uh, that looks like it comes from your organization, you should have, as I say at least, you should have a web page saying our official channels or just official channels. These are the channels our company is using on TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, Mastodon, and so on for official information. And if you are receiving any text messages, calls, emails from any other domains or numbers and so on, it's fake, it's fraud, and you should report it to us at this number or this email, as an example. Uh, you should also talk to SMS providers that you might be using for sending out text messages. Uh, and ask them, hey, do you have any kind of protections in place so that nobody else are able to use our name as the sending name of a text message or the number? In Norway, right now, you can go to any SMS provider, sign up for an account pretty much for free, and start sending out text messages, and you can set the sender name or number to be anyone you like. Do you see a problem with that? I do and they are starting to see the problem appear in Norway now. I don't know the situation in the US, wild guess, I think it's worse here. Spoof text messages. Talk to telecom providers and talk to your government about obtaining insights from telecom operators on detection of fraudulent calls and SMS, because statistics are very, very useful. Now, to my big surprise, I arrived here on Thursday, to my really big surprise, I've been talking to a lot of people already, and have you, uh, you know, ask you to call me. And I thought that since stir shaking has been mandatory for all telco providers in the US since Ju uh, July 1st, 2022, I, will see, I would see lots of check marks. I'm not seeing any check marks at all in my call history. And when I've been calling people back, some people have been telling me, yes, I do see the check mark, but that's like, one out of three, one out of four that actually sees that check mark. I don't know why, 
but please do me a favor, please call your provider, send a message to your uh, provider and ask them, do you support stir shaken? Why am I not seeing it in my call history? Why am I not seeing this on the calling screen? Because I'm supposed to best regards the FCC part of the US government. Thank you. And in the last case, if that doesn't work, go and vote in November and tell your government to do that. You can find me on Signal, here's my phone number, I'm on LinkedIn. And again, let's give me a call if you haven't done so already. I will call you back just a ring or two. <laughs> Room number, yeah. Have you seen this? Compliant. Nope. It's there if you pay extra. If you don't pay extra for your stuff, you don't pay extra. It's not, it's not accessible. It's yeah. Better. So you can give props to the hotel. They called me and they have the check mark. They have the check mark in place. Ex that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. So nobody can book the task in it. Yeah. So next talk in nine minutes. Uh, Cecilia Vian picking a fight with the banks. Uh, that's also going to be very interesting. Uh, in a way, I would recommend especially women to listen to this next upcoming talk, but it's relevant to absolutely everyone. See you back in nine minutes.